Right, so we're on to exercises 1b. Um, if you've been through these yourself um, using the uh, uh, exercise 1b sheet that's online, you'll know already that this is not the most thrilling of um, exercises, but it is one that covers some critical issues which you're going to need to know in order to be able to use Max effectively, uh, or indeed at all. Um, so we start with uh, this thing on the left, um, and this is basically a spot the difference exercise. And the difference should be reasonably obvious um, if you look carefully. Uh, in the right hand side, all of the um, all of the objects have little dots at the end. And while this looks fairly insignificant, um, it is in fact quite significant. Um, certainly it has uh, implications which you need to be um, aware of. <coughs> Basically the difference uh, that this signifies um, is the difference between the way numbers are represented and calculated in Max MSP. Um, Max basically deals, I, I think I spoke in the last, uh, one of the last tutorials about um, the various different message types that Max will deal with. I mentioned that it deals with lists where you'll have a message that has several different items in it all of those items will be sent at the same time, um, but it is, it, it is configured of several items. I also mentioned the bang message, which is this kind of <coughs> trigger do it message, if you like, uh, do whatever it is you do message that's sent to an object, and that basically makes it do uh, whatever it is that that object does. And I also mentioned a number message. Um, well, I only mentioned one number message, but in fact there are two, um, and those two are integer and float um, and the difference is basically that an integer is whole numbers deals with whole numbers and um, a float deals with numbers with decimal places or decimal point a uh, decimal point and decimal places um, <coughs> why would you need the two um, well it basically uh, is uh, a uh, calculation efficiency um, uh, or a means of calculation efficiency uh, integers are a lot less CPU intensive to calculate and require a lot less memory to store than do floats. Um, if you look down on the right hand side here, which I've just uh, kind of popped in, hopefully for, for demonstration purposes, um, all numbers uh, in, uh, in computers require a certain amount of memory in order to store them. So um, if you're dealing with um, just two numbers, 0 and 1, then they only require one bit to store them. It's one switch. You have um, uh, it in one state, which is off, and you have it in another state, which is on. So you just have these two states, and therefore you only need one bit of information, as you can see down here in the binary um, mode, uh, to store that. <coughs> if I go to number two, then we actually need two bits of information to store it. Um, if you're familiar with how binary works, then uh, you'll, you'll know that e each, um, uh, each number requires a certain number of binary digits. It's, it's based on switches. Um, that's probably not very well explained, but if I, if I carry on demonstrating this, hopefully it'll become clear. Um, so 2 requires uh, 1 and 0, so 1 of the uh, 2 uh, digits and 0 of the 1 digits. I go up to 3 and it requires um, 1 and 1, so still 2 bits in order to store that number. If we go to the number 4, we require um, uh, 3 digits to store the number, um, and we kind of increase those until we get to 8, at which point we require 4 bits of data. And that continues, and gradually we, we the number of bits that we require, sorry I haven't made that big enough, uh, to store the number increases. <coughs> Once you get to um, 8 bits in order to store the number, you can accommodate a number as large as 256, um, well, 256 numbers, that, the numbers will be 0 to 255. Um, so that's fine, um, but that only deals with whole numbers, and you need, as I say, uh, 8 bits of um, memory, if you like, to store that number. And again, as numbers get bigger, you need more and more bits. What happens when you need to store a float? 
Well, you need to do exactly the same, but to the right-hand side of the decimal point, if you like. You need, to, uh, you need extra bits of information in order to accommodate the, um, uh, the various uh, uh, small elements of the number, if you like, or the decimal um, uh, aspects of the, of, of the number. Um, so you need more memory, basically, for a, for a, for a, to store decimal numbers than you do um, integers, although, of course, that depends on the size of the integer number that you want to store. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, a lot of the time, if we go back to this one here, a lot of the time you only need to deal with integers, particularly if you're dealing with MIDI. Um, so uh, you will only need to use um, for whole numbers. Uh, but then, you know, and, and therefore uh, you can you don't need as much memory to store them or indeed CPU processing power to calculate them or process them. Um, I think there was something else I was going to say, I've forgotten. Right, but in terms of how, you know, how this affects the outcome when you do do a calculation, uh, let's do, um, if I lock the patch, click on here, put in 1000 and enter. 1000 divided by 1000 is 1. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, but if I were to reduce that number to 999 divided by 1,000, uh, well, 999 divided by 1,000 is not zero. It's not a big number. Well, it's, it's less than one, but it's not zero. It'll be 0 0.999. Well, that cannot be accommodated by the integer because it can't deal with floating point numbers. It can't deal with anything beyond the decimal point. So it truncates, i.e. it cuts off the number beyond the decimal point, And so you just get zero. Um, so um, it's, it's basically given you an in inaccurate result, which um, will be a problem in certain circumstances. So um, we'll do the same thing over here. So again, I'll write in 1,000. 1,000 divided by 1,000 is 1. But now if we go down to 999 or 998, um, we get the decimal place. Um, so that's basically the difference between the two. Uh, and as you go on, you'll see the circumstances in which you need to use um, one or the other. Um, just to point out also that uh, a couple of things, actually. First thing is that the uh, where, where the truncation occurs depends on where you lose the decimal point. So if I lose the decimal point from this number here, uh, sorry, no, this object here, um, <coughs> then this object can no longer deal with floating point. So if I change the number again, um, then uh, although this is a floating point object, i.e. it's got the dot after it, it can't, it, it don't, doesn't know any longer that there's anything more than um, that because it's been truncated at this stage. So I hope that's clear. Um, so basically any calculations you want to do which require floating point need to have um, the point at every stage um, so if, if it's the case of one of these graphical objects, it needs to be a floating point number box, and maybe I should just m make it clear what that is. Okay, so in, in the palette, you have an integer number box and a floating point, so the floating point is the one you'd want. Um, and uh, in uh, the object, uh, any calculation object needs to have a point after the number in order to uh, designate it as being a floating point uh, calculation that's required on it. Um, and that's the case also if um, you want to, uh, even if you don't know what your argument is going to be. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, actually, I haven't explained a couple of other things in here yet, so I'll do that quickly. Uh, if we were to use addition, so I'll make an addition box. Um, and I'm not going to put in an argument. I'm just going to leave it as that. Let's just make this a bit bigger. Um, and I'll use two floating point uh, inputs and a floating point output. 